Good day. I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite, I say favorite topics. It's a favorite one to sort of talk about and learn about, but at least favorite one to participate in. And that is procrastination. And I want to beat procrastination at its own game. We are all born to procrastinate. Yeah, we are born to procrastinate. And on the surface level, that doesn't really seem like it should make sense because procrastination is purposefully putting something off, which we should be doing or need to do or want to do. So when you say it like that, it doesn't really fit with being an advantageous trait for us to have. And many of our traits have come from thousands of years of evolution and millions before that through different animals. So why has procrastination Clung, clung on for dear life and stayed with us when it doesn't really seem to be of much benefit to us. Now, we're not exactly set on why we procrastinate, but there are a few hypotheses in psychology that attempt to explain this. One of these is that procrastination is a failure of our self-regulation. This is called the emotional regulation theory. Our self-regulation essentially is our ability to regulate our cognitive processes, that is our ability to sort of focus on a task, our motivation, so our drive to want to complete a task, and our emotions as well. And when these all come together, it allows us to hone in on a specific task that we're trying to do. So let's take, for example, writing an essay, because that was one of the things that I used to put off all the time at uni. And still now, I find writing is the thing that it takes me getting to that deadline, that very last minute, to be able to actually pull it out the bag and be able to sit and just do it. When writing an essay, we are using our cognitive skills to be able to think of a topic and lots of different things that are relevant to that and pull them together and write down our ideas on a page. We need our motivation and that could be thinking about the grade that you'll get at the end of writing this essay. And we also need to regulate our emotions because if we are really stressed when we are trying to complete this type of task, we will be distractible. So if these elements aren't regulated properly, it's thought that our brain can offer up a short-term mood repair. And I like to say offer up because if, say for example, we are really stressed out by an essay, our brain just detects that as being a negative state. It detects it as being, I'm really stressed. So if there is an option to escape from that stress and do something which will be more pleasant or pleasurable in the here and now, the brain essentially is going, look, instead of doing this, you can go and shop online or you can scroll on your phone. It's offering up a solution to what it perceives to be a problem. And this solution takes us away from doing the task and hence procrastinating. Another theory of procrastination instead focuses on time. And this is called the temporal motivation theory. Essentially, if a deadline is very, very, very close, our motivation to act increases. And this is through something which is called temporal discounting. So if a task is really far off in the future, that time period between where you are right now and when the deadline actually is, discounts our motivation to get on with the task right now. I'm sure you, like myself, I've done this so many times where I do have to wait until the night before, until I actually have the motivation to just get on with a project. And I really kick myself for it because I'm like, if you just give yourself more time a few weeks ago, this would be 10 times better than what it is right now. But now I only have a few hours and it just needs to get done. And a final theory for why we procrastinate is all to do with a calculation between our motivation of tasks that we need to do versus our motivation for tasks that we want to avoid. This is called the temporal decision model. So if you have a really horrible task to do, a really tough, I don't know, project that you're working on, that essentially is going to be in the avoid pile really, really high. So our motivation will be tipped towards avoiding doing that task. Again, if the deadline is brought closer, then it might be the case that you want to really avoid not handing your essay in. And all of a sudden that task moves from a task to avoid to a task to do. All the theories of why we procrastinate have this element of reward or value in them, whether that is a payoff from completing a task close to the deadline, whether that is using a short-term mood repair mechanism. Reward is a 
key element of procrastination. Reward is something which drives our motivation and our motivation is what is likely to captivate our attention and our focus and engage us. And this lets us get on with a task at hand. How rewarding something is to us comes down to valuation processes in our brain. Our brain is really good at surveying our environment and different events and different interactions and putting a value to that thing. Should we interact with that thing? Should we use our energy to engage with it? What will I get out of it? And these decisions are made in split seconds. One chemical that is really important in this process is dopamine. Dopamine has a lot of roles. For example, dopamine is actually thought to be important in our focus. It's thought to be good at making sure our working memory, which essentially is a temporary storage for important information that we're focusing on. So if you're doing that essay, that is where the information of the topic will be stored and where you're pulling in different ideas from different strands of information that you have to compile your ideas and allow you to write them down. Dopamine is really important for keeping relevant information in our working memory. But dopamine is also really important for switching up that information. So say you're working on your essay, you've got all the good intentions, you're cracking away and your phone pings. That ping is registered by the brain and the brain does a really quick calculation of, will looking at that notification be better for me right now than working on this very hard, potentially maybe dull essay. Most times the answer is gonna be yes. So areas of the brain in these reward pathways will release bursts of dopamine, which will flood into our working memory in the prefrontal cortex areas of the brain and essentially say, drop what you're working on, that thing over there is better for us right now. It is a really important skill we have, which is called flexibility, but it also can lead to distraction. So essentially, procrastination is a byproduct of our brain's valuation system. So that means that no matter how much we try, we will fall prey to its miscalculations from time to time. Because our reward and valuation system in our brain is very, very short term, it's very here and now, I want reward. The problem is with many of the tasks we procrastinate on is that they are very long term. There is a deadline which can be quite far off or there can be no deadline at all. So if we bring forward reward for ourselves, this can help manage procrastination. So the first thing that I do is to break down my task into really tiny steps. So if I was writing an essay, I would break the essay down by topic and then within each topic by like paragraph and then each paragraph I would break into the different actual physical tasks I need to do to get that work done. So that could be reading, it could be sourcing references, writing, editing, basically giving myself lots of mini deadlines to achieve. Within these tasks, I set unfailable goals. Yes, unfailable goals. These are really, really small actions that I know that I can do every single day. And this could be something like write for 10 minutes or write two sentences and it sounds a bit naff and if you're working on a deadline now and you're like Julia I can't just write two sentences and expect my essay to be done in three days not gonna happen but for me what I like to do is have an unfailable task to show myself that I am able to complete something and it's not saying that's all I do in a day but I have that as a bare minimum I'm like today I'll write two sentences and I know that I can get up and do that and then from there I can carry on but I know I'm gonna achieve something that day then when I hit my small target I reward myself for doing so. I've seen it when people have put on their like textbook sweets and they go through and they eat the sweets as they read the different paragraphs. What I do is, I don't know, it's really, really simple. I just draw a square on a page next to my small task. When I start doing it, I put a line in the box, a diagonal line. And when I finish doing it, I cross that out. So for me, I will have my small task as write for 20 minutes. And whether I write one word, five sentences, 200 words, whatever, I've written for 20 minutes. When that timer goes off, I put the cross in the box. And that for me is like, well done, you did something today, I'm proud of me. Something else which I've tried to do is to make doing the task itself enjoyable because essentially if you really are enjoying what you're doing the bar for something to come in and be more rewarding than that is much higher it's much much higher if you're actually just engrossed and really having a good time when you're doing a task for something to come in and be like i'm better for you right now the list of options goes 
write down. So for me, making a task more rewarding, this has included putting on good music, listening to a podcast, making a nice big cup of tea that I really enjoy, lighting a candle, going to my favorite coffee shop to work, meeting up with friends to work. I always think, think of something that you really like and enjoy and how can you incorporate that into the task that you're doing or how can you adapt your environment to bring in an element of that really nice thing. And the last thing I would say is that because procrastination is influenced by reward and there is temporal discounting, if a deadline is really far away, it's much harder to motivate ourselves into action. You can make your own flexible deadlines which are much closer. I mentioned this briefly before when I said about breaking the tasks down. When I break a task down into such tiny components like reading on this really niche specific topic, it sort of gives my own deadlines, if you will, but you can also set bigger deadlines for yourself. For example, you could say, by the end of this week, I'm gonna have finished that section of my essay and make it a little bit more time pressured and a bigger overall sort of milestone on your way to hitting the end goal. Now the key word in this is flexible deadlines because I feel like we beat ourselves up enough without setting ourselves these artificial hard deadlines and then life happening and us not meeting them and then beating ourselves up more, that is not motivating at all for getting on with the task. So I call them flexible deadlines, I put them in my online calendar and I will move them in advance if I know I'm not gonna make it. So for example, if something comes up where I'm having to work a really, really long day because something's cropped up, then if I had a deadline for the next day, I'll go onto my calendar and just move it for a few days down the line. So the flexible deadline is still there, but I'm not gonna berate myself if I don't make it. Play around with where your deadline is for this task. It doesn't have to be on the date. And if there isn't a deadline for a task, I think it is important to have some point in time where you want to have it done by. Otherwise, it is really easy to keep putting it off. So that's it from me this week. Thank you for watching. I have another video all about procrastination, which is about treating the cause and not the symptoms, which I made a little while ago. So you can watch that as well if you want any more practical tips on this topic. If you like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. More will be coming your way on this area and also on general information about psychology and neuroscience, which can help us sort of take charge of our life a little bit more and make the changes that we want to make. But until then, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.